despite many interventions and public health campaigns, we know that the rates of being overweight and obese haven't changed. In fact, they're increasing. And this itself is a big risk factor for the development of diabetes. So why does it matter? Is it just a high sugar? Well, in our type 1 population, we know that the longer duration of diabetes you have, the more potential the rates of eye complications and blood vessel complications. And we call these both microvascular and macrovascular complications, but also conditions which affect the nerves, such as peripheral neuropathy. And we know that good control of the diabetes early can potentially reduce those rates of complications quite dramatically. Type 2 diabetes can be quite a complicated and heterogeneous condition. It's often associated be, with being overweight or obese, but not in all cases. And in some people, we find that in fact, not overweight or obese, but in general terms, that's the common manifestation. And there's a combination of factors such as increasing insulin resistance. So the insulin in your body doesn't work properly and the beta cells which make insulin eventually may not compensate with the high sugar levels or the food that one ingests so that in fact the sugar levels start going up. But that's a very simplistic explanation of what type 2 diabetes is. There are many complications or associations which can occur with type 2 diabetes such as heart failure, heart attacks, strokes, blood vessel disease affecting the legs, so peripheral vascular disease, foot ulcers, uh, but also renal damage, so kidney damage. And diabetes, unfortunately, is still the major cause of end-stage renal failure requiring dialysis in Australia at this time. So we have a lot of work to do still to, in order to try to combat uh, diabetes resulting in these uh, associations or complications. So there are quite uh, marked differences between the types of diabetes and look, traditionally we've categorized people in having type 1 diabetes or type 2 but there's also perhaps a variety of types of diabetes in between. But typically type 1 diabetes will occur in a younger individual and they are insulin deficient so they stop making insulin due to what we call an autoimmune process. So they need to have insulin almost immediately otherwise they unfortunately can't survive. So traditionally, it's the thinner, the younger person, but we are also seeing increasing rates also occurring in the middle age and even older population, but it's usually the younger population. Well, type 2 diabetes traditionally is the overweight individual, usually middle age, but again, now we're seeing a lot more type 2 diabetes occurring in our younger population as well. And going back to type 1 diabetes, for example, um, often they're, they're usual symptoms. So uh, the child or the adult or the teenager might be losing weight, they might be very thirsty, they might be passing a lot of urine or just feeling unwell. And that's a critical time where they can be diagnosed hopefully early enough and started on treatment. With type 2 diabetes, it can be much more insidious. And yes, you do have people coming in with these same symptoms. So high sugar levels resulting in increasing thirst, increasing urination, uh, sometimes blurred vision, all as a result of these high sugar levels and the derangements or the issues which occur uh, in your blood, blood tests, for example, your, your kidney function, etc. So you become dehydrated because of the high sugar levels. But it can be much more insidious and often people are completely asymptomatic. There might be no symptoms at all and that's why there's been a big drive over the last 20 years to screen people much much more uh, aggressively and that's occurred in primary care. The tests are easier now. We used to do glucose tolerance tests which involves having a sugar drink or a sugar load and checking your bloods one and two hours after, a bit cumbersome. But now we have other tests, including the HbA1c test, which can be used also to diagnose or screen for diabetes. Uh, and that's a very simple blood test that one can do.